the team which has made SAP and ERP along with digital transformation affordable and easily applicable to medium and small scale organizations. The team of Emerging Alliance represented by Mr. Rahman to take center stage. And we have the team of Emerging Alliance. A round of applause for our co-sponsors Emerging Alliance. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. So my name is Rahman and I have uh, my colleague here with me, Mr. Ravi. So who we are, what we do and what is this presentation about we we'll definitely get to know about it as and when uh, we walk you through the presentation. Okay. So our presentations are coming up on either side of the uh, boards here. So we have a plain and simple agenda. It's a three-point agenda. Okay. And all of which the first point is so extinction of industries, jobs, practices, and product. The word extinction is generally something that we use with species, animals. We say that this animal used to live in this part of time and uh, it's no more, it's extinct and stuff like that. You wouldn't be surprised that the same word extinction can also be used for products, for industries, for jobs, practices. And to set the platform for what we're going to speak for the next five minutes, we are going to look at something which is precious, some products that we have seen in our life, some of the industries and how they have gone out of business or they don't exit, exist anymore. So extinction of industries. So let's bring up our first example. I am sure that uh, everyone in this particular gathering uh, would have had your hands on these photo films. And uh, used to buy one, load it into the camera, make pictures and build our albums. Okay. And it's so very nostalgic that this thing doesn't anymore exist in the market. Okay. People who used to manufacture photo films, people who used to retail photo films, and people who used to process photo films, they're all out of business. We don't even know where they are now. Let's bring up the second example, and this is my favorite. So this is one of the favorite examples. So cassette industry. I'm sure everyone in 80s and 90s used to have a huge shelf in your house which has these cassettes, side A and side B, TDK 90 and TDK 60 and there were some Ilayaraja fans who would go out, record the same song on A side, the same song on B side and stuff like that. So very nostalgic. We don't have this anymore, anywhere. This was taken over by the CDs and then by jump drives and now I think you have Spotify. So we don't even see where these are all. I don't even find it in the old, what to say, shop or what is called as a waste shop anymore. They are totally out of the planet. Okay. So I think everyone has a lot of examples like this which you are going to talk, uh, which you remember. So we will present the next slide. So what we have done is we have taken some of the examples and we have put them on a timeline chart. The timeline is too, it's not too huge. It's just from 2000 to 2017. Just 17 years. And we want to show you some of the best products, services and industries which have totally gone out of business or going out of business. Okay? And we just want to set the platform of what we're going to talk. We have the alarm clocks, I'm sure. Everybody in your house had one by side of your bed which used to wake you up every day morning. Might it be a housewife or might it be a parent, husband or a child who's going to go to the school. Everyone used to be woken up by an alarm clock. That was totally taken over by a uh, mobile phone. I'm not even talking about a smartphone. It was that button mobile phone which took over. And Walkmans, the personalized music hearing, Walkmans, cassettes and stuff like that totally disrupted by Apple iPod and iTunes. We don't find this anymore. Moving forward, <laughs> travel companies in the time frame of 2010 to 2012, if they thought that uh, their competition was basically larger travel company with more number of operators and more number of branches, they were absolutely wrong. Someone from nowhere, an online booking guy called Make My Trip or Yatra.com completely disrupted the whole market. Moving forward in 2012 to 2015, the same thing started happening to the hotel industries. If star hotels in the town thought that 
Uh, the competition was basically a bigger hotel with premium offerings that was absolutely wrong. OYO or Airbnb is the one which is dis disrupting the whole market. If I'm not wrong, OYO seems to be the third or fourth largest in the world in terms of the number of rooms or hotels that they manage. And that's an Indian company. And the same thing happened to Ola and Uber. A lot of big names, at least Ola and Uber gave us uh, relief from the auto fares that we were going through in the city. Okay, I at least thank them every day when I go to the bed. And there are a lot of things which are coming in the future. Okay, this is to just show you what are the things which has probably gone out of market, which ruled the market, which celebrated was celebrated by people, but do not exist anymore. Let's just go to the next slide. So, <clears throat> what are we talking here? There's one thing which is common in all the incidences that we spoke until now. Okay, there's just one thing which is common, and that's digital technology. Digital technology was something which took over, and most of the things that we saw right now has happened because digital technology took over. And there's one thing which is very, very peculiar about digital technology, and that's that when digital technology takes over, by the time we understand what's happening, and by the time we react, we're almost dead, okay? That's the pace at which digital technology gets accepted, because the millennials, or what we call as Generation X or Generation Y, is almost glued to the smartphone and to technology, that they want to get it adopted first, okay? And that's how you have your Swiggies come in, Food Panda come in, everything come in. So that, what am I speaking over here? So. In the next 5 to 15 years, whatever job that we do manually today is bound to be taken over by digital technology, whether we want it or we don't want it. Once again, digital technology is not going to be premium, it's not going to be for the light class, it will be available for the local genre and for everybody to adopt. I'm sure like I was getting into one of the auto these days and it's an Ola operated auto, I said that Tommy, I don't have change, what do I do? Said, said, call brother, sir. Do you have payphone or do you have Google Pay? That's the rate at which digital technology gets adopted. Okay. So it's not an elite terminology or it's not for the premium class. It's for everybody. So now that we have understood what is digital technology, we will just take it a little bit forward to understand what is digital transformation because if you have decided that digital technology is something that we have to put to use moving forward, we need to understand what is digital transformation. So the next few slides will be about uh, what, why, when and how of digital tran transformation. In very simple words, you take your business, you apply digital technology to any or some or to entire business, areas of business and you completely or fundamentally change the way you do business and the way you deliver value to the customer. This is called as digital transformation. I repeat, digital technology applied so that you change the way you do your business and transfer value to your customer. That's digital transformation. Now that I've explained to you what is digital transformation, I'm just going to cite you a small example. I don't want to go anywhere to US or to Europe to find you an example. This example is coming from a local neighborhood. One of the very famous digital transformation events which has happened is basically Indian Railways or IRCTC adopting online booking. Probably some of you should remember like how was it a pain you waking up in the morning, going to the uh, place where you have to book your tickets, there will be a form where you have to fill it and give it stand in long queues to get train tickets reserved. That's all gone. You're booking train tickets right away from your house. If you have to talk about some statistics, IRTC has uh, has uh, servers as large as these rooms. Okay, they handle close to about 4.5 million requests every second. Those are the kind of technology that IRTC uses to handle your online booking. So we don't have to look forward to any other country for digital transformation. We have examples great examples coming out of this country. One more digital transformation example that everyone has seen is basically 
the banks, the way banks have been dispensing money has been totally different. There was time when to get our money out of the bank, we had to slog hard. We have to be there at the bank for a certain period of time, and then the cashier would close the counter and go away and stuff like that. Now it's totally out. We have automated teller machines. Can this go ahead? So why? I don't have to explain you why. Uh, digital transformation brings in a lot of customer satisfaction, which cannot be compared with other technologies. The speed at which your value or product gets delivered to the market is very, very high, and it definitely improves your profitability and quality. Can this go to the next slide? Now that you've understood what and why of digital technology, the next thing is how do I apply it? Simple. Everyone buys something. Yeah. I think my time is getting over, so I'll try to wrap it up as early as possible. So everyone buys something, adds value to the product, and finally delivers it to the market. So we call it as value stream. You have to identify it or create your value stream in multiple stages. Find out an area where if you apply digital technology, it will bring maximum impact to your business as well as your customer. Go ahead, apply your digital technology or concept and see if it's really returning in terms of value to you and see if you have a good ROI. If you have, go ahead and implement it. That's how you find where should I implement my digital transformation in my business. Can you just come down? So, coming to the end of these slides, like why should you listen to us uh, as far as digital technology and transformation advice is concerned? We are emerging alliance. Uh, we have about 10 years of experience in digital transformation business. About 75 employees who do this as a full-time job, 20 plus industry verticals that we have worked, three geographies in 15 countries, and about 100 plus projects that we have worked in. And just come to the next slide. Every digital technology transformation project basically has three components. What we are trying to do is reduce the reliability on human beings and try to increase the process and try to increase the automation. So you have three components. The first component is basically data capturing. This is like when you want to replace a human being. He's got ears, eyes, and hands, and stuff like that. So if this data processing uh, equipment basically do the same thing that humans do. And once this data processing equipment uh, gives away digital signals, we need a software which can process it. And then finally, these softwares have to be fed to an ERP to find an expression of finance or to find an expression of uh, operations. So we basically do all of these three and we integrate them together. So having them married together is a difficult job and that's our core competency. So if you're basically going to take a digital transformation journey, this is what you will be going through. Probably you are a people driven company and when your business is really flourishing, what happens is you have more people brought into the business, which means more chaos, more confusion. So you basically put in an ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Solution, to basically channelize or make everyone work the way you want to work. So that's where you make a transformation from being a people-driven company to a process-driven company. And once you have an ERP solution or a process in place, you start asking questions to that particular mission. So you get analytics and information out of the mission. So every decision that you make in your business is basically coming out of a mission telling you what are the facts and what are the data. So you, your, your decisions are most probably more intelligent decisions. And second thing is the decision which was made by someone who's experienced or someone who's sitting at the top now can start being made by people who are using the system because you have facts and data. Then you have the collaboration and then automation. So if you are going to basically take a digital transformation journey, this is what you will go through. Probably that's our last slide. So we have some success stories to tell you, but since we are running short of uh, time, we will just let you go with this. Generally, these kind of presentation takes us about uh, 30 to 45 minutes to speak, whereas we give you a lot of examples so that you can correlate your industry, correlate your job practices. But since we are short of time, I think whatever we have explained is done good. If there are any questions, we will be more than happy to take it offline and uh, ready to discuss with you. Thanks. Can we have a bigger round of applause for our co sponsor of the Northern Alliance? I will now request Mr. Sevin Sivanandam and Ms. Vishali Mehta to kindly come forward to felicitate the team of uh, Emerging Alliance.